fly inside FSX does just what it says. It lets you fly inside of FSX using the DK2. It does a number of things incredibly well, not the least of which is the ability to get 75 frames per second out of FSX using asynchronous time warp. This makes the head tracking very responsive, all the motion liquid smooth, and I've yet to experience any nausea in all the hours I've flown in here. The resolution is also very good, with nearly all the gauges being easily legible while sitting upright, and the others being able to be read if you lean in just a bit. Another incredibly handy innovation with this is the menu system, where you can pick them up, move them around in 3D space, zoom them in or out, and place them wherever you'd like to in the aircraft. Coupled to this is the ability to access the desktop from inside the game and actually publish an application running on your desktop back into the virtual cockpit. And this opens up a ton of possibilities, solving a big problem we've always had before with flight simulators in the DK2, where you couldn't see charts, checklists, or graphs. With this, these are merely images of the checklist for the 172SP that I can now pick up and flip through inside the virtual Cessna. In the virtual Cessna, if you mouse over the checklist in this case, it will actually pass the commands you type back through to the desktop, allowing me to flip through the different checklists, as you see there. This has hundreds of possible uses. And with all that covered, let's get up in the air. Cessna 350 Tango, runway 35, west departure approved, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, runway 35, west departure approved, Cessna 350 Tango. I highly recommend using a form of ATC like Pilot Edge, because it does add a lot to the realism. Unfortunately, they don't cover my home airport in Tacoma, so I'll leave them out of this and we'll just go with the real ATC. North of your position is a Cub inbound for the downwind, and he'll be over the Narrows uh, inbound for the downwind. Wow. Oh. Here. Roger. Chief Center 1 Echo, you can start your base turn, clear touch and go. Having positional tracking in a 3D cockpit makes it just like real life. You have to bob and duck your head around all the different obstacles to look out the window, see around the door jam, and not hit your head on the sun visors. I've got to say I'm really impressed with the attention to the detail and the terrain in Flight SimX. There's a lot of islands and inlets and waterways out here and you can always tell exactly where you are and as you can see it matches up very well. Words can't express how happy I am to have my checklists where I expect to have my checklists. Next we'll get set up for a steep turn to the right. Add a little RPM, a bit more rudder, there she goes, watching my altitude, keeping that 45, well looking for traffic, gonna bring her up a little, airspeed's still okay, gone through west, airspeed's still okay, 45, looking for traffic, coming up on east, airspeed's still okay, looking for traffic, altitude's alright, a little more bank, coming through east, Coming up on south, and rolling out. Missing G-forces aside, and the rudder pedals being a bit light, uh, that actually feels very similar to real life when you do it in the simulator. Tacoma Tower, Cessna 3506 Tango, about 9 miles to the west at 2,200 feet. Inbound with Tango for touch and go. Cessna 3506 Tango, Tacoma Tower, Ident. Ident, Cessna 306 Tango. Once again, the virtual terrain lines up beautifully with reality, uh, making it a familiar area with all the waypoints I'm used to seeing. You can see why having those checklists was such a big deal. You use them all the time when you fly. Climb via the SID, expect 7,000, five minutes after departure. Departure frequency will be 106 Tango, runway 35, clear touch and go. Clear touch and go, runway 35, that's not 356, Tango. Picture 6 and alpha. Hey, power back, 1600. 
First set of flaps, because we're below 110. Cub 23 Hotel, to come ground taxi to the restaurant via the ramp. Holding 85. Descend until we get about 45 degrees there. One. Echo, follow the Cessna and downwind, or turning base now, on runway, runway 35, clear to touch and go. Chief will follow the Cessna, runway 35, clear to touch and go. Niner 1 Echo. Going out. Below 85. Second set of flaps. Then runway in sight. Keep descending. Down my right. Holding 75 through the turn, keep the coordinated. Holding 75. Good, still below 85. Final set of flaps. That's our position. All right. Pitching for 70. Got my 70, got my 3.5. Looking good. That little bump to come off the cliff. Come off to the right here, over the threshold, pulling the power back gently. Good. Eyes up to the runway. And just like that, we're back. Simulators may not be exactly like real life, but with virtual reality and a good set of controls, it is incredibly close. One of the great things about the positional tracking on the DK2 is its range. If you have enough space around your computer, you can actually open up the door and hop outside the airplane. This has a lot of potential uses in everything from doing your own pre-flight, walking around the plane, or you know, if you feel so inclined, you could actually hand prop it. This also gives you the ability to change seats. Maybe not the most useful thing in the Cessna, but there's a number of other aircraft where that could actually prove quite entertaining. That pretty much sums up Fly Inside with FSX. Um, it's about as close to the real thing as you can get. Definitely worth the download.